Okay, we're in here and I created a super, super basic setup. Simple camera, a model I got from Sketchfab. I'm not gonna dive into details. I'm running EV right now, so anyone with not that strong of a computer, you'll still get the effect. Ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and motion blur. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly add uh, some music. Huge, huge shout out to Milgram. Milgram pretty much created the original YouTube video for this. So if you want to in any way support me, please go ahead to Milgram's channel and support that video. I will be linking it below. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, um, leave some words of appreciation and love, and that's will keep the community running. So, okay. I'm going to quickly show anyone that doesn't know how to add uh, audio into your blender. I'm gonna do it again. It's just pretty simple actually. You just drag and drop it. Bring it over. You wanna get it started at zero. Display the waveform just so you can make sure that you're getting you're definitely gonna wanna find somewhere with the drop. And going back over to our layout, and you'll see it plays when we're in Blender. So now the next thing that we're gonna have to set up kind of here is I like to do a quick little I like to set up my workspace. So right click on just where the borders are between the windows and you, I'll do a little vertical split and then I'll honestly pull up this one. And then what we're going to be doing is once you pull up these two, right click again, horizontal split. If you hold control, you'll get an even kind of the video sequencer and that video sequencer pretty much allows you to kind of see a little bit more when you scroll, see a bit, you see a bit more, but honestly, I'm still kind of figuring this one out myself. We're going to do hold down tilde and view your camera. And what I like to do now here is let's find like a point where that kick comes in. Then we're going to start doing some keyframing of the camera. So that's kind of right away. <laughs> so right about here, it looks like we have a kick. One thing that I saw Milgram do, let's go into graph editor, you have your camera. Uh, make sure you press N so you can open up a bit of the location. We're going to be pretty much just like right there. I'm going to drag my camera in and through that keyframe. Let's look at our graph editor. We just clicked on this and then switched over to in the animation tab to graph editor. And then what I like to do is right now it's a bit linear you can right click and do back and then what you can do is you can click this paste that press G and then hold X and swing it out and it's as simple as that really to get the like kind of kick effect and then you can bring it down I mean if you press G and then press X it kind of just locks it so you don't end up like if anyone presses G's, you can just like, uh, which is not that great. Press G and X. And then if you bring it closer, you'll see it's too quick. And that's why the graph editor is pretty clutch. You do it like this, you can get a very smooth kind of, and you can even round that out a little. And then you see right there, we have a really simple animation. And the way we did that is we just made sure that this all is back. So you right click it. And then what I pretty much do here. And when you, you kind of, if at this point, it's like, you know, like the way the music, it's always going to kick in, just copy it, paste it again. Let's see a single keyframe in the X axis. This is all in the graph editor. Move on keyframe, another keyframe. Another keyframe and we're pacing it. And then what we do is we're just going to go ahead and take these two, move this down, move this up. We're actually going to copy another one, move this up. Uh, I like to make these a Bezier curve. And what we get is now it's like kind of, it's got that, that very violent kind of kick to it. Now what you can do too is like, 
you can kind of like um, scale it if you want. And the way you do the scaling is you select all of these and you press S and then you press X along the X axis, not the Y, because if it's the Y, we're gonna go up like this and it's gonna be even more violent. But what we pretty much do is scale it, press X. You don't have to do this if it's not to your liking. And I like to make sure that it's kind of aligned with the, the kick. So and then from there, paste it again, press G and X to so just kind of drag it around. G and X, drag it around. And now, now you pretty much have a bit of some like kicking. So I'm gonna go ahead and render this. Make sure that your motion blur is on. That's how you get a little bit of that more, some of that more uh, juice, I guess. And we'll just keep it pushing. We are now in After Effects and we have our Blender uh, render and then we have a little audio render we got from Blender as well. Let me know if you guys need any help with that. So go ahead and press L, open up your waveforms. It's a pretty important part. It's gonna be pretty obvious because you can kind of see when it's happening uh, in your render, but I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and just complete this. So first thing first, you're gonna create an adjustment layer and let's go ahead and find that beat drop. So right on here, what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna be doing something with the fast block, fast box blur. And it's really simple. So let's go past page up, I mean page down to go ahead one frame. And then you're gonna go over to edit and then we're gonna split the layer. That's also shift command D and we're gonna do that about eight times. Uh, let's just do shift command D, page up, one. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Let's just actually delete this first one. One, two, three, four. Split, oops, split this one, split this one, split this one. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more split, okay, I'm gonna delete this. Now let's go, ahead, go in here and select every other one by holding down control, I mean command or control, select that. And what we're going to do is we're going to click all of these. Um, we're going to pre-compose them. I'm going to call this blur. We're going to come in here and we're going to add the fast box blur. I'm going to just attach these to each one. And we're going to set it to about, set this to about 100. Go back to our screen shaking. And there's one key thing you have to do. You're probably not, it's probably not going to work right off the bat. And what you need to do is, I believe it's this button, which is comp layer. So maybe a hundred is not our play. Let's do like 10. Then what we'll do here is we'll just make it match a little bit more. Duplicate it, bring it over to the next bounce. That's pretty much a nice little kick kind of like shaking effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and render this out. Uh, super simple. All right, y'all, we've done it. We're back. Um, recording tutorials is, is pretty fun for me. And sometimes it definitely can feel like, you know, you record it and it tries to be perfect. So uh, I'm very grateful for you, everyone. And just like, just how patient you are, I guess, with me, because, you know, it's not perfect. I'm not a blender expert. I don't have any like crazy background when it comes down to just like, you know, I see some people in the YouTube sphere where they're like, I've worked in this company and that company and this one, and I've done all this 3D stuff. And now I'm a graphic designer slash product designer, UI designer, and now I'm fucking with this kind of stuff. So it's much love. Thank you so much for everyone that has stuck around. Thank you for everyone that hits me up on Instagram, that's showing love constantly for all my projects and that kind of stuff. Um, I wanna see what everyone else is up to, so feel feel free to just 
you know dive in connect with me on any of the socials that you see in my description or feel free to subscribe and tap in but like always much love and thank you